Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you who are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to my channel. My name is Julia and I am a second year medical student. So this video is the third and final video in a three part series in which I am detailing my MCAT journey. If you did not catch the first two parts, be sure to click the links above and watch those videos. In part one, I discussed the first time I took the MCAT and how I bombed it. In part two, I discussed starting from the beginning, completely redoing my strategy, taking it the second time and doing much better. And in this part, part three, I'm gonna talk about all things MCAT, all the tips and strategies that I have learned from not only experience, but also working with the admissions department at my medical school that will help you do the best that you can on the MCAT. I wanna just jump right in and talk about do's and don'ts for MCAT preparation and things that you should be doing in order to do the best that you can on the MCAT. First things first, you need to familiarize yourself with the MCAT. As pre-medical students, we all have at least heard of what the MCAT is or know that you need to take it in order to go to medical school. But where I and many other students have fumbled the ball is not really knowing what the MCAT is. Like any other test or game or sport, you need to know what you're stepping into before you start preparing. So there is a document, a PDF document on the AAMC's MCAT website, and it is called MCAT Essentials. MCAT Essentials has everything you need to know about the MCAT, including the content and structure of the exam, how to register, what the cost is, fee waivers, all of the details that a student would need in order to get to know what the MCAT is. What I personally did was printed it out I made a folder dedicated to the MCAT. It was my MCAT folder. I had my MCAT essentials in there. I had all of my notes that I was taking while I was content reviewing. I had charts and graphs and periodic tables and everything that I needed in my central MCAT folder. Just do things that make your life easier. So along with doing the necessary research about what the MCAT is, you also have to choose a date. So choosing a date is actually much more stressful and anxiety producing than it should be. However, it is really important. So you should not underestimate your MCAT testing. A major key for choosing a date is that you need to be realistic about the test. If you are not a good standardized test taker or those STEM subjects were not your best in college, then you may be a student who would benefit more from a later test date in order to give you the maximal amount of time to study for the MCAT. On the other end, if going into MCAT prep, you are confident and you feel like you have a good grasp on the material and on how to take the test, then schedule as early as you can in the cycle in order to have that MCAT score back before or as close to the AMCAS application cycle as possible, and you will be at an advantage. Because the thing about the AMCAS application cycle is that applications are accepted on a rolling basis and interviews are offered as applications are coming in. As you could imagine, this totally advantages students who apply early because their applications will be looked at first. If they're competitive, they will get the first interviews and so on. So you have to find the balance between getting your application and MCAT score in as early as possible, but also taking as much time as necessary to make sure that you do well on the test and that you're in a position to get an interview. It doesn't do you any good to schedule an early MCAT test date just to make sure that you're in that first wave, but you don't perform well and thus don't get an interview. So find that balance. My last note about familiarizing yourself with the MCAT and your test date is that it is not the end of the world if you have to move your test date. But I strongly advise against this for a few reasons. Not only does it cost money, and this process is expensive enough as the way it is, but also you do not want to get into the habit of psyching yourself out. Once you pick a test date, you need to be firm with yourself and act and prepare accordingly as if you are going to take it on that test date come hell or high water. Do not put the idea in your head that this date is movable or flexible because your mind 
will always convince you that more time is better. And before you know it, you're pushing your MCAT off a week, two weeks, next cycle, next cycle, and you see where I'm going with it. So sit down, be realistic with yourself, choose a date that works for you, and start preparing for it. So that brings me to my next major topic, which is MCAT preparation. No matter who you are, what point of the journey you're in, if you are somebody who will be taking the MCAT, you must, must, not should, not if you want, you must create a study plan. In order for anyone to do well on this test, you must have a detailed, structured timeline and study plan for the MCAT. I'm not going to go too much into the details of what your study plan should look like and all of that because we are all different. Everybody's coming in with different experiences at different points in their education. So you kind of need to sit down and work your study plan out for yourself. I will make a video about my study plan, but like I said, my study plan was mine. It worked for me. And you might find something that works completely different for you. But there are three major components of a study plan that I want to talk about. And they are content review, questions, and practice tests. So let's start off with content review. While prep courses like Kaplan and Princeton Review are great resources for students, in my opinion, unless you have thousands of dollars just readily available or you are in a situation in which you really want or need that extra help, I truly believe that these days a student can prepare just as well, if not better, by using resources that they find online compared to taking a course. I took two prep courses in my experience, Kaplan and Princeton Review. And I'm not gonna say I didn't get anything out of them. I definitely did, but for me, it was more so strategies on how to actually be a better test taker rather than helping me with content. And becoming a better test taker is a skill and can be worked on. And I'm going to talk about that in the next two parts with questions and practice tests. So unless you are very, very adamant about taking a course or have found nothing else to be helpful for you, I really think you can do it without it and it will save you much money. So then what should we use for content review? If you did not watch my second video in which I talked about what I did the second time around, I used Khan Academy. Khan Academy, I love you guys. Khan Academy saved my MCAT life. It completely changed my score from a failing MCAT score to a score that got me into 10 medical schools. If you're not familiar with Khan Academy, please do yourself a favor and go look it up. It is a great website that has every single topic covered on the MCAT in one place. It has a video for each concept. It has practice questions, graphs. It's just amazing. And more importantly, if you didn't know this, Khan Academy is supported and funded by the AAMC. The AAMC. This is the organization that makes the MCAT. Hmm, would you look at that? So then I would assume that Khan Academy is probably a legitimate resource. It probably was vetted and thoroughly analyzed by the AAMC to be a valid resource for students to use for MCAT preparing. So use it. But whether you use Khan Academy or textbooks or whatever, the important point about content review is that it should be used for three different purposes. To review and refresh material that you should have already learned, to relearn and nail down difficult concepts that you struggled with before, and to quickly store a lot of information and very little details in your short-term memory in order to take the test. But you should not get hung up in content review. Although it seems like there's so much that you need to know, and there is, the next two components of your study plan, questions and practice tests, are far more important to your success on the MCAT than content review. And I know that probably sounds crazy, but it's true. So why is that? 
let's jump into questions. Doing questions is critical to your success on the MCAT. You cannot do well on this test simply by having a brain full of knowledge. You have to know how to answer questions and how to pull the knowledge that you have or that you should have reviewed during your content review and apply it to the question at hand. This is where many students, including myself, fumble the ball. We get so caught up in wanting to stuff as much information in our head and relearn everything down to very, very minuscule details that we forget that the MCAT itself is testing you on how to take a test. So don't fall into this trap. Do not spend 10 hours of your day looking at concepts and reading materials and watching videos and doing no questions or taking no practice tests and then showing up at the MCAT and expecting to do well. You will be in for a rude awakening. So this is actually something that I myself even never did. I never did questions. I took practice tests my second time around, but I did not do questions. But that is something that I strongly, strongly, strongly advise you to do if you're looking to do well. So UWorld is a great resource for questions. And it's one that we actually use in medical school to prepare for our board exams. And the reason why I'm suggesting it is because in preparing for my board exams now, I realize the power of doing questions. And I just know that if I would have incorporated questions early on into my MCAT preparation, that I would have done far better. UWorld is legitimate, it's thorough, and it's pretty affordable compared to taking like a prep course like Kaplan or Princeton Review. So check it out, see what you think, but no matter what resource you use, incorporate questions early. Even if you start six months, eight months before your test date and start by doing five a day or 10 a day and work your way up to full sets of questions, 40 questions, and you will see the progress. So the last component of the study plan is practice tests. They are a major key for success. The practice test is essentially a bunch of questions. And if you've already been doing questions, which I strongly advise that you should be doing, then the practice test is more so used for getting a vibe of what the test is going to be like and to sit there and get your endurance and stamina up and to see where you stand. But the major thing about MCAT practice tests is that you cannot be afraid to take them. And I know that this is easier said than done, and I've been there, so I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. I promise I do. It's so intimidating. You don't want to know what your score is. You don't want to know, you know, where you stand sometimes because it could discourage you. But you have to get out of your head. You have to. You need to take one early on to get a baseline and see where you're starting from. And that score... Who gives a crap? Like, it doesn't matter. It's the first score. It's what you're going to work up from. It's going to be hopefully the lowest score that you see yet. But you need somewhere to start. You can't be intimidated by taking practice tests because you will never know where you stand. So please, please, please take them. The double AMC makes the MCAT. And they have four to five full-length practice tests available on their website. I strongly recommend you... Try to complete all of those tests. The double AMC, like I said, makes the test and their practice tests are the most reliable and the most similar to your actual MCAT. So these should take priority over any other company's MCAT practice tests. But be strategic because the double AMC practice tests are the most reliable and often the most predictive. I know for me personally, I used exam crackers and the double AMC and the exam crackers practice tests were super hard, which I appreciated because it challenged me, but the double AMC practice tests were nearly identical scores to what I actually scored. So you might want to use your double AMC ones closer to your actual test date so that you can get a very good sense and accurate estimate of where you're scoring and where you will potentially score on your real exam. So a few important notes about practice tests. Full length practice tests will usually give you a scaled score with a percentile rank, but 
Many will not give you explanations with the answers. This is obviously helpful in you seeing where you're scoring and what your percentiles look like, but it doesn't really do anything for you getting an understanding of why certain answers were right and wrong. The thing about studying for any standardized tests, including the MCAT, is that there can often feel like there is this time crunch, right? So therefore, you need to know how to use your time efficiently and when to move on. So when it comes to practice tests, what I would recommend is that instead of reviewing the entire test and looking up every single answer, I believe that it is a better use of your time to review the test completely right after or shortly after you take it, but make notes of topics that are either recurring and keep coming up because they're probably important, topics that you are struggling with and that you need to go back and really refresh and relearn or any other specific concepts that you want to go check out again later. In my experience, this strategy was much more efficient because I'm reviewing the entire test and seeing all the questions and answers right after taking it. So it's fresh, I'm making important connections, solidifying the concepts, but it's also much quicker because I'm not looking up every single question and every single answer choice. So just be efficient and strategic with your time because there's a time crunch. And my last note about practice tests is that you should simulate actual testing conditions when you take practice tests. So don't just lay in your bed and do questions all day and then see what you're scoring because that is not what's gonna happen on the day of your test. You want to go somewhere private, go to a library, go somewhere in which you can isolate yourself, sit down all day, take the test, take the breaks, take the lunch, and act as though you're in a testing center on test day. This will help you tremendously in eliminating test taking anxiety and to really just get you comfortable and familiar with taking the MCAT so that when you show up on your test day, it's a walk in the park. You already been through this hopefully many times before in your preparation and you don't have any jitters or anxiety about, oh, I've never done this before. I've never sat down and taken a full length practice test. Do yourself the favor and get all of those ducks in a row before. So overall, just be sure to familiarize yourself with the MCAT, what it is, know what you're stepping into, and then create a study plan. You need to incorporate content review, questions, and practice tests in your preparation in order to do the best that you can. Just remember, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Let me repeat that for you guys. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. The MCAT is hard work. It's gonna be a grind. It is not easy. But proper preparation sets you up for success. So if you slack on the preparation, then you can't be mad at your performance. Watch my first two videos. It was a disaster for me, but I knew it was on me. So I couldn't even be mad. I was sad, I was frustrated, but I hit the drawing board and started preparing better. So don't slack, do yourself the favor and do the preparation so that you don't even have to question what your performance is gonna look like. And a few last important notes that I have for you guys about the MCAT. First, you need to work at a full-time pace. Whatever that looks like is up to you and what your schedule will allow. Everybody is different. Everybody has different life circumstances and things that they're juggling. But if you wanna go to medical school and hopefully you do, then the MCAT has to be your priority. And along with proper preparation, it's time. So you have to carve out that time in your schedule and make it work. Secondly, be careful not to overwhelm yourself or burn out. Burnout is real, y'all. And trust me, you only get more and more tired as this process goes on. I'm exhausted. I know that it can often feel like there isn't enough time to learn all that it is that you need to know for the MCAT, but you have to realize that you will never know all that there is to know for this test. There will always be something more you can know. Rather, the goal should be for you to get to a place where you know enough to do well on this test and get you admitted into all of your dream medical schools. And lastly, be confident. Prepare adequately so that there is no doubt in your mind that you are going to kill the MCAT. Your mind is half the battle. 
So put it at ease by doing everything necessary to set you up for success. Proper preparation prevents poor performance, right? So go study. So that's it, guys. Those are my tips and strategies on how to best succeed at the MCAT. Be sure to check the description box for all of the resources that I mentioned in this video. So drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think, where you're at in your journey, or if you just stumbled across this video, drop some positive affirmations in the comments for students who are watching who are MCAT studying and might need some words of wisdom or encouragement during this difficult time. We are with you. We are here for you. You are going to get through it. Trust me, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And if anybody knows this, it's me. So keep grinding, do your preparation, and I'll see you on the other side. Good luck.